Hey, what's up, everyone? This is David Greenspan, and I want to welcome you back to Season 4 of the Mindshare Podcast. Additional podcasts are available at Mindshare101.com and on all the major podcast platforms. This week's episode is sponsored by Kits Keep In Touch Systems and the Buzz Conference. Now, if you're not already, hit up the Buzz Conference on Instagram and give them a follow at the Buzz Conference. Also, make sure you get this month's copy of the Buzz Digital Magazine. It is a very, very special issue that you're not going to want to miss. Just go to their website, www.thebuzzconference.com. And when was the last time that you checked out the Kits Cross Channel Marketing Suite? This is your full-on marketing tool set, starting with Loop CRM to help keep you organized. The most personalized and effective direct mail newsletters deliver response rates of over 35%. Email newsletters, websites, social media content, our super easy three-click landing pages, complete with automated action plans, and so much more to help you manage your business, generate more leads and more referrals, and build that mindshare to drive even more sales. You can learn more on my site, mindshare101.com, by clicking on marketing. And as you know, we are on a push to get 100 reviews on iTunes, and so I would like to ask you if you haven't yet, please take two minutes to rate the show, leave a review, and again, we are always trying to make it super easy for you. Please just go to www.ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshare101. As always, thank you in advance. Today's episode is number 167. He is a C-21 Hall of Fame winner who was ranked as high as number three in Canada within Century 21 over his time with the network. With over 3,000 properties sold in his small market, he ran the number one C-21 team in Canada in 2015, and he's been a consistent top producer ranking in the top three for agents in his office over many years. Married. A father of two boys, he is also a hockey coach. And his son Adam is ranked in the top 13 in the upcoming CFL draft as has been named the top running back in the country who represented the U of S Huskies as an all-star this past season. And his other son Tyler played two years of football with the Calgary Colts. Most recently, Ed just left Saskatchewan and his 20-year real estate business to move to Kelowna, B.C., In less than six months there, he has already opened a supplement store with his two sons and taken on the role as business development manager for Supplement World Canada. Plus, he has also continued his successful real estate career and has once again built a top-notch team in Kelowna. From his humble beginnings coming from the farm in Harris, Saskatchewan, he is an entrepreneur at heart and is always searching for new challenges while conquering them head-on. This week on the show, I am joined by top producing realtor and entrepreneur, Ed Mackhart. Ed, welcome to the Mindshare Podcast. Hello, David. I have a feeling that my mother wrote that intro. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we were uh, very fortunate that she took the time to uh, to join us today. No, (laughs) it's amazing, man. It's good to have you here, bud. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's uh, it's actually quite humbling and and uh, quite a privilege. Well, I I, uh, I would say it's right back at you, man. It's uh, it's amazing to watch what you're doing out there, and I'm I'm very I'm very excited to be able to share that with uh, with everybody today. So I thank you for making the time. Um, and I gotta say, I mean, reading through that bio, which uh, <clears throat> mom wrote, no, I'm joking. Um, hockey coach, <laughs> two boys playing football. I mean. Yeah. Life is certainly busy. Now, albeit, I, I understand that they're grown men and, and, you know, they do have driver's licenses, so you're not running around and having to drive them places all the time um, like we did in the past. But, but, you know, along with some serious accomplishments uh, for you, for both your guys, I mean, just a big congratulations for all you guys. It's, it's very awesome, man. Some really good stuff going on in your world. Well, I appreciate um, But that. I do have a question. Yes. Upcoming CFL draft. When does this yes. all go down? And how excited are you for Adam to embark on this like next chapter of his football journey? It's, it's actually, I can't even say it's a dream come true because I don't even know if we dreamt this, to be honest, it was, (laughs) you know, here's my little guy, uh, 12 years old, putting him out into the football field as a peewee and the, the coach going, Hey, Adam, you don't seem to be too afraid. You want to try running back to this blur to now we are, uh, Adam's training right now for the CFL combine, which is in March. And then we'll participate in the draft in April. And from there, whatever team selects him, 
uh, he'll be going to their to their uh, spring camp and then hopefully makes the team and, and then uh, has a CFL football career. Oh, that's amazing, man. That is so, so, so exciting. I know, you know, uh, having Joshua and watching him play hockey and watching him play baseball is one of those where you sort of look and go like, you know, what might he do for himself, right? Like we can only present so many opportunities. Um, so it's always say, you know, would he go to the MLB? Would he go to the NHL? And so, you know, to, to have a boy who's going to play pro football, I, I don't know, man, that's so cool. Well, Congrats. That's, that's you know, big. But, and what I want to add, uh, David is, you know, Adam, both my boys are they're They inspire me. They're one of my inspirations. And you made the comment about driving to practices and things like this. He had this vision and I wouldn't say necessarily CFL, but he had a vision that he wanted to be better. So at 14 years old, he asked if he could start going to the specialized training. And uh, we, it, we said, yes, sure. We'll drive you. It was across the city and uh, the facility was called Ignite. And from the time that he was 14, he started doing this. He has, he's, he embodies the phrase, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So he has worked his tail off and he's added that Love to that. his and he has gotten to where he has from hard, hard work. And so I'm so proud of him for that. That is amazing, man. Well, it, it must, uh, you know, it waterfalls from somewhere, right? There's good things that, 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 you know, people are taught and there's the upbringing. And I mean, in fact, when we talk about the upbringing and, and looking at you with, you know, humble beginnings, um, success with your boys, your I know for a fact you're incredibly hardworking. Um, tell us more. Who who is Ed Macar? Just for everybody that that does you know sort of doesn't know you. Well, I I grew up on the family farm, very small farm, uh, just outside of Harris, Saskatchewan. Uh, you know, Dad was a very hard worker. My mom was was a sweetheart. She's an angel of a lady. Um, you know, and I said this in another interview one time that my dad taught me to, how to work. And my mother taught me how to behave, how to treat people, you know, manners, things like that. And uh, so from there, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting in a small town, you graduate with the group of people you went to kindergarten with. And so that's quite unique and special. So, you know, I've got quite a few friends, you know, over the years, you, you know, some people drift apart, you go into different parts of the country, but, um, you know, there's a lot of us that still stay in touch. and. Uh, from there, I, you know, there's some people that right out of high school, they know that they want to be a teacher. They want to be an accountant. They want to be a nurse. I, I didn't know. I had no idea. And frankly, I didn't put the effort in, in school to really pay the path. So I took the long route. I worked, I actually became a meat cutter and, uh, I worked in that industry for many years, um, until I built up my confidence and started to see that there was, there was a path, there was an opportunity for me. Now, was that opportunity in real estate? Because I was going to say, just as a natural adjunct, where did the whole real estate thing come from then? Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, in a, in a show this short, you know, you don't have, a, I, my history is quite, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of moving. Um, I was in living in a town with my best friends. We were playing senior hockey. We were working away and uh, I had made friends with a few teachers and a lady by the name of Linda Robotham uh, and I were talking one day and she's a great educator. And she found out that I didn't finish my English for my grade 12. And she's like, what, what do you mean? We're going to get this for you. And, and I said, well, I don't want to do the GED thing. She says, no, we're going to get you your proper English. And so I showed up at, at, at this one school in, in Grand Cache, Alberta, and I wrote two English exams and uh, got my marks back, passed, you know, high marks, thrilled. My parent, my mom was thrilled. And, um, and then that went away. I never did anything with it. And then there was another lady in town that said, you'd be a great realtor. You'd be a great realtor. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, commissions, you know, no, that's not something I could ever do. It wasn't until years later, um, my dad passed away in 1999, 53 years old. Um, we were living in Alberta. We moved back to Saskatchewan and we started over again. And I actually started with a home builder and I was a new home sales consultant. And, 
you know, it went, it went fairly well, but Saskatchewan wasn't really booming at the time. And it was, it was a tough, it was a tough goal. Uh, <laughs> being the entrepreneur, I also had a bison ranch at the same time. My dad passed away. So we, we, um, oh. my brother and I started uh, ranching bison. And I will tell you that sidebar, a hard day in real estate is nothing like a hard day in the bison business. I had two 22 pound bulls running at me full speed with nowhere to go. And I survived it. So I think now I can survive anything. Dude, right. I'll tell you, and I'm sure I shared the story with you, but when I took my ride out to Tofino or part of me to, uh, to the Yukon on the motorcycle and we went to Northern BC one day just to like do some hot springs. And I remember they, you know, the people at the resort said like, you know, there's, there's, there's a family of bison up ahead. So you're going, okay. Right. <laughs> We pull up and I'm telling you, I must have been like, you know, on the bike um, and not five feet from me was this like massive animal, whereas his like eye was bigger than my head. Yeah. Yeah. And it was I mean, there, there must have been a hundred of them on the side of the road right there. Yeah. And it was wild. And it was just it was it was a very, very cool moment. Uh, but I could not imagine having them actually run at you because they are huge. Yeah. So just, so I, just I could to, see that could be a tough day. <laughs> so when I would feed them, my big boys, I called them my big boys, my two bulls. Um, I, I would wear in wintertime, you're feeding, right? I'd have these big mitts on and they would come and eat the bale while you're getting the strings off. And I could take my mitt and put it on one of their horns and, you know, not quite scratch, scratch their head, but close. Uh, yeah, these yeah. Were very, very dominant, impressive animals. Anyways, I digress. Wow. Um, yeah, no. Wow. Five, five years into that bison business or four, uh, I had recognized that this wasn't the path. This wasn't working. Uh, the market was soft. Um, so we sold our bison. We sold our farm. And uh, I went and picked up my real estate books the next day. And I started. Interesting. Yeah, I started, uh, I had, a, I was working for a transportation company. I started studying at noon at coffee breaks on the weekends. And I knew that this was the path. Um, I didn't know where it was going to take me. I didn't know the journey that was ahead of me, but I knew that this was something that I had to do. And it was the direction I was going to go. And I managed to get my, my uh, courses in and done. And it's funny now today you go in and on a computer, and you get a hundred questions. You the, the answers are there. You pick A, B, C, or D. When I wrote the exams, it was it was back in high school. It was a uh, a piece yeah. of paper that had questions on it. It it was it was challenging. So, anyways, we got it done, and then I uh, ended up with my real estate license. But I'll take you back to that grand cash story with that teacher. Had she had not done that for me, I wouldn't have had my grade twelve. I wouldn't have been able to get my real estate license. So we amalgamated my my high school marks from Saskatchewan and these two English marks from Alberta, and there's my license. Go figure. And then you said that you started like the first place you started with with a home builder. Is that because I wanted to ask you like where did you where did your absolute first deal come from? Yeah, my very first deal was with my home builder in in two thousand. Uh, working okay. for, for them. It was actually, I'll tell you, it was Northridge Developments. Uh, Wally Ma yeah. uh, and Colleen were gracious enough to give me an opportunity. Um, when we moved back to Saskatoon, we'd bought a house and we bought it through Northridge and the sales rep, Terry, she was fantastic. And I'm like, I want to do what you're doing. I want to do what you're doing. And uh, um, that's how it started. So from a, uh... So from a marketing perspective, did you have to do anything to market yourself at that initial point? Or was this all very much about the home builder? That was, it was all the home builder. There, okay, there got no, it. And then at some no, point, you obviously branched out and kind of did your own thing. Yeah. So, right? so I ended up, um, a, yeah. I ended up yeah, leaving yeah, ahead, that. I ended up leaving that um, just because, like I said, it was, it was tough. Like, a brand new house in Saskatoon at that time was $159,000. Um, you know, beautiful 1200 square foot bungalow with a double attached garage. And I remember the builder bumped the prices up and working, you know, the show homes and people going in going, you're never going to get that. That's never going to fly. That's too much money. And so, you know, obviously where we are today, the world is completely yeah, different. Can you imagine? But, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where it started. I left that, uh, went into a transportation company as a, you know, something a little bit more stable for me. 
Um, and then after a few years of that, I was doing my real estate license and I had my ranch and then sold the ranch, went into real estate full time and, uh, and then moved, moved up into my real estate career. So talking about moving up into that, then from a marketing perspective, as we look at that and we, we, you know, now it's time, it's like, well, what am I going to do to build my brand? What am I going to do to build my business? How am I going to get my, how how am I going to get the word out there? What did you do? to start marketing yourself. And, and as you sit here today, what would you say is like, you know, your favorite or most effective marketing tool that you leverage when it comes to just building up your business? And, and of course, like we say, building Mindshare. Well, and, and I do, I love the Mindshare uh, philosophy and, and that's always been me. You know, we talk about as realtors internally, we talk about database, we talk about, yep. um, you know, dots on the board and and things like that. And that always bothered me. I prefer the term sphere of influence. These are people on my list, in my database, what have you, that I care about, that supported me, that bought from me or sold through me. And and I just have a little different take on that, that uh, I put people in there that matter. And so when you ask what I do for marketing is I try to do little things that are fun. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I've delivered uh, Christmas balls at Christmas. I've done coloring contests. I've had cookies made. I've dropped them off at, at people's doorsteps. Um, e- at Easter, I'll do a chocolate bunny and, uh, and do that. These are just little personal things that I like to do that, uh, that I think are unique. Nobody does them. It's, and it's funny. It doesn't sound like a lot of work. It's a lot of work to deliver 200 chocolate bunnies at Easter when you've got a busy real estate career and what have you, but it has to be done by me. I don't like to farm that out. It's not personal. It's not the same. And, and that, that builds the relationship and people, people respond to that, you know, handwritten notes, you know, I'm trying to teach my sons that now nobody does that anymore. It's, and I, my handwriting isn't fantastic, but you're going to get me in whatever situation there is that I'm in. I am me. and I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to pretend I'm something I'm not. Um, this is a note for me. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. And, and that's, that's what I've done. I, uh, I love it because we said, how long have you been in the business now? It really? depends. If you count in the new home builder, what have you, 18 to 20 years, somewhere in there. So say 18 to 21 years. um, uh, I mentioned in the bio there, uh, over 3,000 properties sold. Right? Um, Yes. And here's here, here, the reason, listen, I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. And what I want to reiterate to everybody who's tuned in right now is understand something is that Ed has built a very successful real estate business. Um, you know, top producer in the office, winning the awards, et cetera. But you can obviously hear from, from you know, if you're watching, you're just listening, but you're humble. And when we talk about marketing, um, you went immediately to the things that you're doing, actually go and drop things off to people and that you have to do it. And I think that for everybody tuned in, you really got to internalize that one because, you know, when we hit a level of success, we find uh, excuses why not to do the dirty work we used to do to grow our business. We find reasons to get complacent. We find reasons to be able to say, you know what? It's all good. I'm making money. I don't need to do those things. Yet what you're saying and what you just shared was, no, it's all about that, you know, power of the pen. It's all about going by and seeing people and physically dropping things off and that, no, it cannot be somebody else. It has to be you because that's where the impact comes from. So well, then tell me this then. So is it, yeah. So, so based on that, you know, I do coach other agents, agents ask me for advice and, you know, going back to the, the talent, when the talent doesn't work hard, hard work will, will win out. I always go in as the underdog and I always, my philosophy is look at, I'm going to be me. I'm not driving the, the BMW. I'm not wearing the expensive suit. You're just going to get me and other people may be flashier, more talented, but no one's going to care more and no one's going to work harder than I am. Love what you just brought up there, man. That's important, right? It's the hard work. It's not about the flash. It's not about the bright, shiny object, the pomp circumstance and social media has bred that for us, right? Like that thing of, you know, but you got to have a lot of selfies and you got to have a lot of like, look at me's and all that. And it's not. 
This is about yeah. relationships with people. And we continue to really try to, to, to hammer in. So, so, I mean, maybe a question that we all know the answer to already, um, but I'm going to ask it anyways. You know, where has most of your business over the years come from? Um, is it, you know, online lead generation and then social media ads or have you, is, is, Ed, is this, you know, focused on brass tax relationships, um, really trying to leverage the repeat and referral business? Well, I can tell you that it's not lead generation systems. I, I don't subscribe to that. I don't, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm proud that right now my current business is 99% referral. And I'm proud of that. You know, you're only as good as your last. You're only as good as your last deal. And 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 I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. You know, but I don't subscribe to that lead gen. I want to talk to people that want to talk to me. I don't want yep. to surprise somebody with with the way that lead gen system works. Anyway, so I, I move on from that. Okay. Um, so here, here, here. Well, no, but I did. I did work. I did have another builder. So, so yeah. early in my career, uh, you know, working away, uh, you know, family, friends, uh, I did tap into that original database that, uh, or sphere that I had from my, my previous builder. Um, and, uh, I started my business that way. I popped into the, to the office of, of, uh, this builder one day because I couldn't get any information or I couldn't, I had four deals on the go with them. And I just wanted to get my, my files and my paperwork cleaned up because I wasn't getting any response. So I talked to a very nice lady and I had all my files laid out and she was impressed with how tidy they were. She gave me my copies and I went on my way. I don't know how long had passed. I get a phone call from this builder and uh, they said, hey, we're looking for another realtor. Are you interested? I'm like, uh, sure. Uh, I didn't apply for anything. I didn't do anything. So when I met with them, I asked them, well, how did you hear about me? And she says, well, one of our staff were very impressed with your files and how you handled yourself. Handled yourself uh, and that's who we want to work with. And so that happened. And so I have little stories like that through my entire life where somebody recognize that I don't know that I was just a genuine person and I, uh, you know, deserved an opportunity and, and the opportunity presented itself. So you asked me where that business came from. So a lot of deals I did, I worked with a lot of builders or sorry, I, I did a lot of deals through my builder. And then I uh, uh, started to build my, my sphere of influence through that. Love it. Okay, cool. So again, when we look at it, it's very much, you know, focused around the people that we know, it's the connections that we have. So, okay. What advice would you give to anybody that's really, you know, kind of at that onset of the real estate career, um, getting started in the business? Or you know what? I mean, Ed, even somebody who's been, you know, a couple of years, two, three, four years, but they're like, yeah. I want to get to that, that next spot. What would that advice be that you'd give to them? Yeah. Well, and that's a great question. And, and I just had this recently with an agent that has been in the business five to seven years. And it's just like a house, just like a building. It starts with a strong foundation. If you do not build that foundation, you cannot build your business. And that foundation is your, again, sphere of influence, database, whatever you want to call it. That is your bread and butter. Those are the people that are in your corner that are going to support you. And it's important to build that every day. And that's, you know, mind share, that's knocking on doors to people, you know, following back up. It, it really isn't harder than that. And I, I find that agents try to make it more difficult and it's not, this is a people business connect with people and your business will grow. It's simple. You know, I was going to say to you, what's that magic ingredient? Like 3000 properties. So what is the magic ingredient? But I think you just shared it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, I, again, I'm not the sharpest dressed person. I'm, there's a lot of people that are uh, a lot more articulate than I am and maybe have a little bit more hair. And, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm genuine. I, I care about someone walking through the door. I'm not going to sell them something that they shouldn't have or, or, you know, isn't right for them. It's, it's, it's just about people. Yeah, I think, uh, I think everybody needs to internalize that, especially when we look at the market the way it is right now. And we think to ourselves that, you know, prices are not $159,000 anymore for, for a, a single detached home, right? Um, 
but we look at the prices and uh, this is an ongoing conversation that that many of us have been having for a long time now over the past couple of years uh, with the way the you know inflation's gone and the way house prices have gone and interest rates are low you know the question around like are we in a bubble and where are we going and what is the market looking like and I think that it's 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 really important for everybody to understand that you know when we really look at it all it comes back to some of these you know grassroots things that you need to be to really grow your biz and, you know, being honest with people. I mean, how many folks are out there right now and, and, and uh, people listening right now, you know, you get in one of those situations where you get a buyer who is starting to get really, and most of the buyers are priced out of the market already, but starting to get like really priced out of the market. Yeah. You know, you need a deal. What advice do you provide to this person? You really need the deal. So do you say, Hey, don't worry, we can make this work. I'll get you the financing. And we push them into something they shouldn't really be purchasing. Or do we, kind of suck it up and go, you know what, this, this is not the right property for them. I'm not going to give them that advice. And, and I know that that's the way you operate. Well, to me, it's, it's, if you're working with someone, it, it's, it's my aunt, it's my grandma, it's my mother. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're in charge. They have to make their decision, but I want to make sure that I've given them all the information I can for them to make a sound decision. After that, I, I can't necessarily take responsibility. Um, you know, people, people make the decisions for themselves, but, um, you know, going back to what you said about an agent starting their business, there isn't a better time to start a business. Real estate is the talk of the town. Everything that you want to learn is, is online. You can watch YouTube videos. You can, you can watch motivational videos. You can, watch how to handle objections. You can, it's endless to the education that's out there that, you know, that we didn't have maybe earlier on. And, and that's part of what I'm excited about every day is there's, there's something to learn. I'm 52 years old and I'm learning every day. And so you don't have to create the wagon wheel, just take different spokes from different people. It's, all the information is out there. So if you want to create your business, pick a few people. In our office, there are some outstanding agents. In our, in, our, in our city, there's some outstanding agents. I'm just one of 20 or 30 that would you would consider top producers. And they're good people and they're successful. You know, shadow them. Take, take a look at what they're doing. Um, earlier on in my career, I always had guys like Gary and Hal, and they know who they are that I could go to and they would give me some great advice. And, and I think it was Hal Turner that told me, be a sponge, right? Absorb everything in, but spit out the negative, spit out what you don't need, but capture that information. So I've been that sponge through my entire career. You know, you look at what different agents are doing and, uh, it's, it's, you can just take little bits and pieces, put your own spin on it, but then you can be you. And it, it's, you know, don't overthink it. It's not that hard. You had said something a moment ago about the foundation. Um, yeah. And I would say, I, I would say I completely agree with what you said. And I wanted to extend on that uh, because you know, there's a lot going on in, 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 in all of our worlds. Um, we know yes. there's a lot going on in your world on a regular basis. And so the yeah. question becomes, how do you manage it all? Right. Cause I, I've always said that the foundation, a lot of the big foundation around, you know, the footings to be able to build it all on is you've got to know how to empower a schedule to manage you. Right. Yeah. And again, it's not managing time because we can't manage time. It's about having time manage us. Um, and I, 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 again, strongly believe that that's a big part of, you know, the structure that you build anything on top of. Yeah. Um, but with everything going on, you know, how do you stay on top of your days? Because in a moment, I'm going to ask you more about, you know, the move and the, the new business right. and everything else. But yeah. Yeah. man, you built up an amazing, amazing business out there. And all of a sudden you decide, Hey, let's just take on more yeah. on top of the fact that you got these sons playing like professional football. There's, there's a lot going on in your world. How do you manage it all? Yeah. Um, you know, it goes back to that farm background. Uh, I work hard. Yeah. Because what I do, I don't find is hard work. And that may sound a little funny, but I've done, I've worked at some jobs that are hard, hard jobs. Um, this is not hard. This is, again, it's about people. So I'm up very early in the morning. I spend some time in the morning. Uh, uh, I call it my dreaming room uh, where I, I think about 
ways to make my presentation better. I listen to motivational things, um, you know, just get myself prepped for the day. And then at the end of the day, I have my next day laid out for me. I know what my day, uh, I've got my schedule, I've got my to-do list, I've got it categorized to different, you know, what's an A priority, what's a C priority. Um, and then in between the day, I just handle those, those tasks. If that makes, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think uh, routine is key. You know, yeah. knowing um, what we're doing when we wake up, knowing what needs to be done throughout the day, um, tackling it all. And, and, and look, it never comes without the hard work and the effort. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But staying well, on top of it is always yeah. a challenge. Yeah. And there, there's two books that really influenced me. And that I'd recommend any business owner read. And uh, one is um, uh, Michael Gerber, The E-Myth Revisited. And the other one is mm -hmm. The Compound Effect with um, uh, Darren Hardy. Darren Hardy. And those, those two things really changed my, my life and my, my business career. Um, the E-Myth talks about why small businesses fail and what to do about it. And the compound effect, you know, it, it, it basically, you know, it's like compound interest. You know, you do a little bit each day and it turns into something. So when I work on my database, like for an example, I just uh, worked on a task in uh, the Kelowna market here with the Okanagan uh, Home Builders Association. I'm sending out introductory letters to all the home builders. There's 140. So I put letters together and, you know, that's quite a task to print out letters, print out promo. Yeah, for real. And so I employ the compound effect. So I'll do 20 or I'll do all the envelopes. Then I'll do something different. Then I come back to it. And then the competitive nature in me goes, well, I did 20. I'm going to do 30 now. Well, in, in a day, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know that I'm done. So I motivate myself through my own competition. I compete with myself in everything that I do. So, uh, but those two books and, uh, you know, everything that I do is a system. I have a budget. I know exactly what every deal costs me. I know what my business costs me. I have a plan. Where do I want to be? How am I going to get there? You know, both in real estate, in supplement world and, and personally. And, uh, and, and that's, that's what I do. You know what it's, uh, but having that, that thing that you do, that way that you operate, you know, that again is what leads to that next level of success, that, that, that yeah. next chapter. And in fact, talking about the next chapter, all the success going on in Sask and you got all this great stuff happening, top producer. Yeah, let's go and move to Kelowna. Well, <laughs> I mean, listen, I've been through Kelowna. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, but, but why? Like, why the move to Kelowna? Um, and, and how did you just pack up and move? Well, <laughs> the, the, the missing element in all of this is my wife, Peggy, right? Ed's on the show. Ed's talking about success. It's Ed's boys. But, you know, like my wife, Peggy, is she's an amazing individual. And, and I wouldn't recommend doing what I do or how I do it to anyone. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm privileged, I'm privileged and humbled and honored that she's stuck with me, uh, because, you know, being this outgoing a type personality and then morphing my boys into a type outgoing personalities, like it's, it's a load. You want to put, uh, you want to put the four of us in a room, you know, poor Peggy, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a load. Yeah. And so, uh, and she's wonderful and, and she's a big, she's a big why for me. Right. And, uh, and, and now that we've made the move, I think she's starting to talk to me again now after, uh, once I tell you, <laughs> so do you want me to tell you the story of what November and December looked like? Oh man, I could only imagine. So, Adam's football season started in September. And so um, that's really important for us. So we start the journey. I believe we started the first two games on the road and, and our team, the confidence was there. The talent was there. There's a good chance we're going to go all the way. So yeah. we fly out to BC. So Peggy and I are already in Kelowna. We drive to British Columbia or sorry, we drive to Vancouver from from Cal or from Calgary, uh, Kelowna. Uh, we watched the game. Sorry, I apologize. We were in Calgary first. We drove to Calgary and they got thumped first game out of the gates. 
thumped. Ah. And this is not what we're supposed to do. The next game, they're in, in BC, in Vancouver. So we drive to, to uh, Vancouver. Uh, they do fine. We get, and then we all, the whole family drives back to uh, Saskatoon. And now we're going to stick in Saskatoon for a bit until the season ends. But I go back and forth. Fast forward, Adam gets injured. He gets dinged up. He's not playing as much. In 2019, he had 1,330 rushing yards in eight games in the season. Huge, huge year. This year, it isn't quite going that way, and they have him on a bit of a pitch count, and it's just not as outstanding as he would like it to be and and everybody expects. All right, fast forward to the playoffs. Here we go. Um, We play uh, BC at home. We win. We play Winnipeg the following weekend at home. We win. All right, we're off to Montreal. So yep. Ed flies to, to Kelowna for a week of work, getting the store ready. Um, we fly. So Adam flies with the team to Montreal. And then I fly from Vancouver to Montreal. Peggy and my oldest son, Tyler flies from Saskatoon. We meet up there. We get into Montreal. We enjoy it a little bit, but we're out, we're there for the game. And so now we're in a hostile environment. We've never seen anything like this. The fans, uh, for that football game were fantastic. I mean, absolutely, what a blast. But they are playing music and sirens and horns, and it was the loudest thing I have ever experienced in my life, ever. And uh, and it's a tight game. And this is what's called, uh, if I have my names right, the UTEC Bowl. So we have to win this game to go to the Vanier. Western's already won. They, they're they ready. They're waiting for the winner of Montreal and, and uh, the Huskies. So... It's a tight game. I believe going into the second half, it was 4-1. It's cold. It's blustery. You just just go, why are we doing this to our young men? But anyways, Adam (laughs) Adam has a great game, and it's exciting. There's 11 seconds in the game, and our quarterback, Mason, and this is the story that I'm told. At the start, we've got the ball with a minute, 50 some seconds left. We get it in our end, and it's a drive to win the game. And he walks out to the huddle. And says to the boys, this is the drive we're going to tell our grandchildren about. And talk oh, about weird. Man. And so these guys are amazing. So this drive encompasses the full two minutes. It incorporates a bunch of players. Um, so here we are on the, I forget the, I think it's on the 13 yard line. It's second down. There's 11 seconds left on the clock. And it's a handoff to Adam. And I believe that the play is to sort of center it so the kicker can kick it so we can tie the game going to overtime. And I know Adam said, no, we're, we're done. We're ending this game right now. So he runs a 13 yard touchdown. Super exciting. The, the, it deflated the arena, the Husky fans and parents are going bananas anyways. So that's a long drawn out story. We win the game huge accolades for the players and the boys. Yeah. And it's a huge relief. You get past that, that game. And now we're going to Quebec city. So now we're, we pack up the team's already gone. We go to Quebec city. So now we go to the Vanier and, you know, exciting game, but just didn't go the way we wanted the boys. The boys couldn't get it done. It just is what it is. All right. Now reality hits. What I hadn't told you is a few months prior, I had sold the house based on not sure if we were going to go all the way or not. So we added an extra week on possession at the time. So we fly all back. So you lose the game and it's like, you're gone. Let's go. There's, there's three airplanes heading back to Saskatoon. We're, we're all on them. We land, we start packing the house that Monday, Tyler packs up and he's gone to Kelowna. We have Adam's uh, Husky banquet on Friday, Saturday afternoon. I'm gone with a a U-Haul and a a trailer with our things. Um, Tyler or Adam flies out Sunday to Kelowna. Then I think it's Tuesday, Peggy makes the journey. So we've emptied out the house. It's been a week since this 10 days in Montreal. We get to Kelowna. Our store has been broken into. So we had to deal with that. (laughs) <laughs> we get into the, we have enough time to get our things into the two condos that we have. And we go to the store and we open the store December 18th. 
So wow. we had possession, Unbelievable. Possession December 15th of our house, opened the store December 18th. And it was quite, quite a journey. And like I said, and so here, and you don't know, you're, you're driving into, you're opening up a store in a new community. You don't know anything about, you love it there. You know that it's going to go well. And for our first uh, day, when we opened the doors, we had people lined up down the street. It's just so. unbelievable, man. It's like you go through this entire journey. And we talk about that foundation of like, how do you manage it all? Yeah. You go through and share this story. And it's like the entire, your entire world is like yeah. up in the air right now. You're flying all over the country to go to different places. Yeah. Yet. One thing I want to mention here in the meantime, you've got this like brand new thing starting for real estate in Kelowna. You've built a yes. new team out there that is all, already crushing it. You open up a brand new store called Supplement World. You move in your house. The place yeah. was broken into. I mean, jet setting all over the place. Like that is a lot to deal with. So tell me this then, you, yes. you know, you're doing all this stuff. How, how did you, you know, you, you sort of leave this, the, the, the real estate business back in Sask and you move out to Kelowna to do that. How do you transition that part of things? Like what's the, the trick to that? To well, and, it, and it's, you know, if you've heard the term burning your ships, right? This was something that I wanted to do. You know, Peg and I took five years to, to do this. You know, going back five years ago, we flew into Kelowna, first time ever to watch out and play football. And we knew that this was a place that we wanted to spend some time, um, you know, move, move ahead, move fast forward. You don't know how it's all going to pan out, but um, I couldn't have done any of this without some serious planning and some, you uh, you know, systems put in place already. So I've got, I had a friend or have a friend, uh, his name's Norm. Uh, we've been friends for, uh, I want to go back and say 17 years now. Um, so he came in, trust in place. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, we're different. We're very different, but he's methodical and, and, uh, and incredibly good with paperwork. And, uh, I know that he will make sure that my clients are taken care of. And so, you know, talked to him and said, Hey, here's what I'm doing. Are you interested in taking, taking this on? And, uh, I don't think he was ready for me to tell him, I, I believe it was towards the end of December. I said, Oh, by the way, that I've let my license in Saskatchewan lapse. It's all, it's on you. And so I don't know if he was prepared for that. Uh, he's better now. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that, that, uh, and it was time for me. I felt that, you know, when you stop growing, it, you know, it's time. And I, and I, I've got wonderful clients and I'm very grateful for them and I love them. And, and, uh, but for me personally, I was, I was starting to get a little stagnant. I was starting to get stressed. I was starting to have, uh, well, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm getting to the same age that my dad was when he passed away with a heart issue. I was starting to have you know, stress and anxiety. And I, and I just went, you know, this is, I need to do this. And, uh, and it made it easy because the boys were, the boys were going to be part of it. Um, you know, initially when we first started looking there, it was just Peg and I, and how are we going yeah. to leave our boys behind? We're very close. We have a very, very unique dynamic with, with, uh, the four of us. And it's something I'm really proud of. So anyways, it, it, how do I do it? Uh, it was planning. It was planning. Yeah. So you go and, and you, you, you obviously create this, this catch point being norm for the business in Sask. Yeah. Move over to Kelowna. You've obviously got the network. You're part of Century 21. So you stayed within yeah. the network, uh, which obviously just makes a lot of logical sense. And, and from there, you're now connected with a great office in Kelowna and have yeah. now built a team over there as well, which you're yes. mentoring some new agents and they're learning to grow and they're learning to catch. Um, I know that you've now become a, a member of the Home Builders Association or, 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 or you've got a connection there. Um, yes. yeah. But you also opened up, like with all these successes happening, it, let's talk to the supplement world store for a second here, right? Like, <laughs> let's just take something else on. Yeah, we'll open up a store and manage inventory and start a new business. But but you're doing it. And like you just mentioned, yeah. you had a lineup down the street. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The boys know, there now. I know the Instagram account is blowing up. Um, there's a lot yeah. of good things happening. And, and for everybody there too, uh, uh, check these guys out. Supplement World Kelowna. Um, so if you are a BC person, uh, specifically uh, check it out. If, if not just BC, uh, Supplement World is found uh, in different parts of our country. So check that out as well. Well, you know, to, to tell you the story, 
<laughs> nothing's nothing's immediate. You know, things take time. And uh, Adam was working at uh, Supplement World Saskatoon and ha- had been for I was four or five years. And, you know, watching him and listening to him tell stories uh, about the store, going in and saying hi and looking around it, it's not really a, a, a product that I had consumed a lot of. And they, they make these amazing uh, protein shakes that are low sugar, you know, low fat, high protein, and they're really good. And, uh, you know, then I met the the founder, Josh McGowan, and, uh, you know, I told him one day, just, yeah, I'm so impressed with what you do. Like, I'm really proud of you. You don't know me, but, you know, from an outsider watching, you know, I love business. I love to see people succeed. And, and uh, you know, when we started, started to chat and, you know, say hi once in a while, and then it, then it just evolved into a conversation. And we were going to Kelowna and, and I said, you know, why are you not out in Kelowna? And, and he said, well, it's just hard for me to manage. You know, Josh has, you know, 10 stores now. He's just growing this uh, amazing uh, amazing company. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll, I'll do it for you. Ha ha. Well, lunches and dinners later, here we are. And that's just how it evolved. Um, you know, and at the time, Adam didn't even know anything about it. Adam had his own path. He was going to do some things with his life. And so I didn't want to influence that or change that. He came to me one day and said, I think I'm going to change my path, my future. And I'm just not sure what to do. And I had this um, package that I'd put together and I said, well, what do you think of this? You know, and there's a silence and a look and are you serious? I'm like hundred percent. He's like, I'm in like, this will be fantastic. I said, it means you're moving to Kelowna. And he's like, I'm ready. You know? So we, you know, talked about, put a strategy together. Tyler was already in. um, And, uh, and I want to give a shout out to my two business partners. They're silent, uh, Brent and James. Um, it was very gratifying for me. I went to them and, and said, I could do this on my own, but would you guys like to be part of this? And they didn't even know what this was. And they said, yes. And it was, really, uh, it was a really special moment for me that they trusted me. And it says, it doesn't matter if you're in it, we're in it. And, uh, I take that very seriously and, and, you know, having a partner in this and they're silent, so they don't really aren't in the day to day, but, um, I work to make them successful and with making them successful, I become successful. And that's the road I've taken with Josh with, as our relationship grows is I want to make you successful, Josh, you're already successful. I want to take you to another level. And, and I believe that if we put someone else first, will always will all there'll always be something there for us. So that's my that's my philosophy. I really like that. Uh, putting other people first will always be something for us. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And a lot of the underlying tone to a lot of the successes today seems very much uh, revolved around the relationships that you got with others. Yes. And and you know with Norm and, and with your partners and with yeah. Josh and and obviously with the boys and with your family and and the relationships you got in the two different you know cities and and and, and within the network. I mean, all of this is really the backbone of what has led to the success. So, you know, you had once told me that um, people tell you all the time that they want to do something, but oftentimes something stops them from going and actually doing it. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, one, I guess, how do you stay so driven and so focused on all of these things you got to do? But in the same breath, I guess, you know, what advice do you have for anybody who really wants to step out and, uh, you know, either make a career change um, or simply expand their horizons and their opportunities or more specifically, you know, how do they actually get past the fear of change, right? And yeah. and and yeah. take that next step towards whatever that opportunity is. I mean, Adam was like, yeah, no problem, I'll move. You're like, hey, I'm going to move to Kelowna. And I'm thinking yeah. like, man, that that's huge. But but fear will get in the way a lot, right? Well, what I find with fear, fear is opportunity. Fear is education or failure is education. Fear, uh, failure is opportunity. You know, I learned a long time ago, uh, go fail your ass off. And that's something that, that I did. I I did make some mistakes. I did fail, but I was able to take, 
take the knowledge and the lesson from it, leave the negative behind and put that into, into growing. Um, so advice to someone, I, I, I find a lot of people come to me with that question and then they go and they ask seven people, well, what do you think? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Um, and it, and it, and it skews them. It, it, it sends them, well, you want to be a commission realtor? Or do you, you know, Oh, this is really hard. Oh, the market. You're not, you know, it, it's people I think have the greatest intention sometimes, but if you want to do something, go talk to somebody in that interest industry. Don't go talk to somebody like a friend, a neighbor, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, not that they're not going to be supportive, but form your own decision, be bold. And, and, Failure is not something to be afraid of. It's it's something to embrace. <laughs> that that makes you know sense. I couldn't agree more with that. Oh, it makes uh, it makes complete sense. I mean, this to you know I say this all the time, right? That 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 path towards success is loaded with failure, and I mean we see it all the time, and it's you know fail or 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 try fail learn try again, fail again, learn again, try again, fail. and it's crazy because as I do that, I'm going up as opposed to down, right? But that's the path towards success. And oftentimes we don't even realize that. Oftentimes we don't internalize that enough to understand that, you know, it, 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 it is all about failing, right? We think about the first time we tried to walk, the first time we tried to talk, the first time we tried to skate, the first time we tried to swim. I mean, the first time we tried to, to ride a bicycle, we failed every single time. Yeah. Yet well, for those of us that do a second nature now. Yeah. And we're taught in school that failing is bad. Well, failing isn't bad. Right. Failing is, is we need to change that word from a negative uh, context to something positive. What did you learn? It didn't work the way you wanted it to, but what did you learn? Right. How can you take that and implement that into uh, something positive? And I think that's really helped me in my life is, you know, uh, you know, I still in touch with a few of my teachers and, Failing, you know, I did a little bit of that and lack of effort and things like that. Um, <laughs> and and it, it should be an MBA. I've learned so much from failing and failing for me now is it's not a fail. It's like, OK, that didn't work. Let's recalibrate. Let's go at it from a different angle. It's it's perseverance. So talk to me about this then. What, um, what about the the idea about needing? or not needing validation and about finding out what you really want and then just getting out there to do it. I mean, yeah. tell us about that. Like, I mean, you know, do we need to be validated? Do we need to, to have other people going, yeah, that you're doing great. Or is this more about us? How, how do you get past that? Well, I, I, everybody's different. Everybody's unique, but you know, I've been fortunate to work with, uh, work with a few people that, you know, Century 21, they give us these beautiful trophies. Um, mine are packed in a storage unit. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> validate me. I mean, you know, I was just talking to a good friend of mine who's a realtor. She's super successful. And we talked about these trophies. And, and I go, you know, I love to get it because what it is, it's a measuring stick. Did I achieve my goals? But as far as the validation goes, <laughs> You know, my validation comes from my sons, right? My validation comes from my mom, right? You know, uh, my wife, you know, that's your measuring stick. I don't look at, I remember selling a condo. I had a realtor roll up in front of this condo project that I was selling in a BMW. He walked out, his suit was worth more than my entire wardrobe. And he wanted to buy a condo that for a rental property. So we did the paperwork, I sent it off. There was no chance. The credit was a mess, whatever. It, that stuck with me for a long time. It doesn't matter. You can have all the accolades, all the trophies. You can have the fancy car. Who are you? What is, what are, what's your value system? And, and, and so accolades don't really mean a whole lot to me. So then let me ask you this. How do you know it has been a successful day for you? 
How many people did I talk to? How many smiles did we have? How many good conversations? Uh, you know, did we check off some things on our business plan? You know, did, you know, did we have a great lunch? Did we high five? Like those are, those are, that's my measuring stick. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, again, yeah, it, it, it never fails that a top producer will tell you that they, they want to make people smile. They want to help people. Um, and it's about other people. Yeah. You know, well, David, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in my condo. I have the mountains to the south of me and I have the lake just this direction here. I Are you go trying to rub it in? Like, what's going on? You well, no, right I'm not. I'm not. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to say, I am a farm boy. I am a prairie kid. I love my Saskatchewan roots. But one of the things that I wanted to do is to get more active. And so this morning early, like I said, I get up early. I went for a walk. There's no snow. I walked along the lake on a boardwalk. The waves are coming in. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's an amazing feeling. But it doesn't matter where you are in the country, where you are in the world. Just get to work. Keep, keep positive thoughts. Surround yourself with positive people. And the one, the one thing that I did too is I was fortunate enough. I, you know, always surround myself with good people. My broker in Saskatoon, he's fantastic. He's a great guy. He's helped me with my confidence. Um, we've coached hockey together. Um, I didn't know if I could do it without him. I come to Kelowna and I meet a broker here. He's fantastic. These are wonderful people that are excited to see you succeed. They're excited to have you. They're excited to see you succeed. You know, just, just get at it. Um, my mortgage broker, uh, Jeff, we've been partners for many, many years. He is the best at what he does. Um, he makes sure my clients get the best service. My lawyer, Brad, in this business, I feel loyalty is incredibly important, right? And so you stick with these people, you grow together, you work together, and everyone's going to look after you and make sure that they do their part to help you succeed. So it's just, you're not on this, you're not on this journey alone. Relationships. An underlying theme today. So, so give me, give me, uh, give me some last words. Give me some, some, um, you know, some tips or some advice that you would just give to everybody out there. And, and, and look, it's been loaded today. There's been a lot of amazing, amazing tidbits. I've been taking, you probably see me taking a whole bunch of notes here. Um, but just as we sign off here, right. You know, some final words that um, anybody tuned in today and or through, you know, any of the, uh, the major podcast platforms can leverage to help themselves get out there. Of course, build more mind share, grow their business and overall have a lot more success in life. Live just, you know, happier, more fulfilled days. What, what are some final words you share with everybody? Well, you know, that's, that's interesting because we're all a little different. I, I believe, though, that it's people. And just get real. Be you. Don't try to be somebody else. You know, don't take a look at an agent that's or doesn't matter what they are. You know, don't try to emulate something that you're not. Just be honest. And, uh, you know, again, the foundation, you have to do the bricks and mortar of whatever industry you're in. You have to build that foundation and then grow it and stay consistent. Plan it. And, it, you know, none of this is hard. Take a blank piece of paper and just start making some bullet points. Most of what I do, and it goes back to my early education, is simplify it. Dummy it down. None of this is complicated. I have a beautiful pitch book that started with a blank piece of paper. And I just wanted to write out what I want people to know about me. And then somebody else with, with different set of skills makes it beautiful. So just keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. And just remember, it's a smile and a handshake and, and build that mind share, right? Those relationships. It's that simple. I like it. I, yeah. I like that last line there that build that mind share. I'm, I'm going to use that one. <laughs> and uh, where can people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think if you don't mind, I, I might leverage that one. Um, hey, man, where, where can people find you? If anybody wants to connect, uh, they want to learn more about obviously what you're doing, you know, just from a real estate perspective on, on you know, in any of the provinces you've operated in. Uh, much the same if they, anybody wants to inquire further about uh, Supplement World and find out more about that. Where, uh, where should people connect with you? 
Yeah. So with, with supplement world, supplement world, Canada.com, um, you can reach us through that, uh, uh, supplement world Kelowna on Instagram is, is the best way for me as a realtor. Um, you can, you can find me at edmacart.ca or, uh, basically if you Google a Mac art into, uh, into it, uh, you're going to find myself or one of my boys. You might have to filter through a few highlight videos of Adam to find me where I'm not the, the, I'm not the uh, most popular Mac art anymore. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So we're going to, we're going to start sharing a little bit more about Adam's journey, his path to the draft. And, uh, it's an exciting time for us. Well, listen, I'll tell you, man, I, uh, I, you know, I, I and, and you know this, we've spoken about this, but uh, not the biggest football fan. I'm more about my baseball, my hockey, but uh, you guys have converted me uh, and it was very, very exciting to watch him go through that playoff run and watch all the accolades. And um, it was definitely really special to be watching on national television and, and all jokes aside on anything right now and watch Mac Hart be like the key name and like the highlight that they were just focused on that guy at all times. And I remember talking to my buddy, uh, uh, an ex CFLer, I've shared this one with you, but, uh, Noel Prefontaine. And, um, I've been coaching his son for a number of years in hockey and he's, uh, you know, next kicker with the Argos. Um, and I'd message him. I'm like, Hey man, you got to turn this on. My buddy's, you know, son is on <laughs> and everything else. And, um, he turned it on. We were going back and forth. So it, it, it was very cool, but, uh, Super, super, super excited for Adam. We wish uh, you and the family okay. and, and him, of course, um, nothing but the best of luck with uh, with that draft. Uh, you know, watching the accolades he was getting from all the reporters and, and the sports uh, channels. Um, I'm very confident he's, uh, he, he's going to be doing well and be in good shape there, man. So big congratulations to you and uh, okay. a very, very big thank you for making the time to join me on the MyShare podcast today. Uh, some just amazing, amazing insights from you, man. Well, thank you for having me. It was a uh, pleasure and a privilege. And, and, you know, I just want to, you know, turn your fear into something positive, right? If you're afraid of something, figure out how to make it a positive. Great words, man. Great words. Ed, thank you. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're either listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or maybe you went to my website, Mindshare101.com. And while you're on my site, make sure to download your free copy of the Ultimate Marketing Bundle for Realtors. This is a 31-page ebook packed with a ton of tips and tricks for you. Plus, there's a ready-to-go 90-day social media content calendar to help you build more Mindshare so that you get more market share. And if you want to talk about personalized one-to-one -one coaching to help you get to your next level, just get in touch with us. We'll set up a free consultation call, learn more about what you're looking to achieve and how we will help you do just that. Also, don't forget that our push 100 is on and all you have to do, this is super easy, is go to www.ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. And of course, if you haven't yet, connect with me on Facebook at Mindshare101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan101. I want to once again thank Virginia Munden and the Buzz Conference for sponsoring today's episode. Be sure to visit their website, www.thebuzzconference.com, and follow them on Instagram at The Buzz Conference to keep tabs on all of the awesome events they are always hosting, along with getting the latest copy of The Buzz Digital Magazine. And of course, I want to thank Kids Keeping Touch Systems for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't checked us out yet, just go to my site, mindshare101.com, and click on marketing. This has been another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you for tuning in.